Now let's take a look at a basic high pass filter and uh, we'll look at uh, two of them simultaneously. We recognize right off the bat this one where the input goes into the inverting terminal means that this is an inverting amplifier. And this one over here where the input goes into the non inverting input, well, this is obviously non inverting. Notice that uh, they both have a feedback resistor which goes from the output to the inverting input. And they both have an RC network in the inverting input, in one case to ground and the other to the input. So, how do these circuits work? Well, let's first of all make some approximations. Let's say with this example, what the low frequency gain of this circuit is low frequency gain. We'll say, for example, DC. Well, um, at DC, this capacitor is open circuit. And so we can see here that uh, the circuit has no gain. So, at very low frequency, the gain is equal to zero. And um, if we were to plot this in terms of logarithms, we would have uh, 20 times the log of zero is equal to, and we'd have an error. Uh, because it would be minus infinity is what it would really be. So a uh, gain of zero or infinite dB, so it's just nothing comes out. If you look at the low frequency in this case, the capacitor again is open circuit. And uh, so if that was the case, we could see that Vn appears here. Vn would also appear here. So there's no current in the inverting input. Vn would appear here. And so the low frequency gain of this circuit is 1, or 20 times the log of 1 is equal to 0 dBs. So now the question is, what is the high frequency gain? Well, the high frequency gain is calculated by uh, presuming that the capacitors are short. So let's take a look at that. The high frequency gain of this circuit, the capacitor would be short, and it would simply be R2 over R1. And over here, it would be, the capacitor would also be short, but because this is a non-inverting amplifier, the gain would be R2 over R1 plus 1. So now let's uh, see how these uh, circuits work when we plot them and put in some real values. So for this circuit over here, we're going to let um, R1 equal 1K like we did before. Let uh, R2 equal 10K. We'll let uh, C equal uh, 0 0.1 microfarads. And in this circuit over here, we're going to let uh, R1 also equal 1K, R2 equal 9K, and let's see equal 0 0.1 microfarads as we did before. And again, we recognize that we're going to have uh, corner frequencies here are the corner frequencies determined now by the combination R1 and C, R1 and C, whereas in the past it was, uh, it was um, determined by um, the feedback resistor. So now let's just, just take a look at this. The corner frequency here, Fc, is equal to 1 over 2 pi R1 C, and in our case, that's 1 over 2 pi, 1K times 0 0.1 microfarads, and that equals to 1.6 kilohertz. And uh, in fact, uh, since these values here are exactly the same, the corner frequency is the same for both circuits. So now let's uh, plot the response on our Bode plot, our gain frequency plot. 
So we'll have 20 dB, let's say here. And a 1.6 kilohertz, let's just put it right here, let's say, 1.6 kilohertz. And remember, this is now a high pass filter, so this part of the frequencies will come through, but these part will not. So this corner is right here. And we're going to go now one decade down instead of one decade up to see what happens. So to go one decade down, this is going to be, let's say that this is one decade over here. Then this is going to be 160 hertz. So how do we go about plotting this? Well, clearly the high frequency gain for both of these circuits is going to be the same because this one over here is going to be a gain of, of um, R2, which is 10K over 1K is equal to 10. And the gain over here is going to be 9K over 1K plus 1 is equal to 10 or 20 dB. So they're both going to have this response up here. Then because the corner frequencies are the same for both of them, they're going to have exactly the same response down to, down to here. Now notice that uh, this one is going to keep on going to minus infinity dBs. Well, it's just going to keep right on going, whereas this one flattens out at 0 dB. And remember, at the corner frequencies, there is a difference of 3 dB. And so the actual sketch will look like this. one, and it will just look like this for the other. So, which one is which? Well, notice that it's the inverting amplifier that has the signal which goes down and down and down to minus infinity dB. So this represents the inverting response. Inverting response. And uh, this represents, over here, both the inverting and non-reverting. So we'll say these are both responses. And this is the non-inverting response. Here we have an Excel spreadsheet to be used to plot the magnitude of the response as a function of frequency. And as you can see, it is reasonably close to our very simple sketches that we've been making.